What's up? <clears throat> uh, didn't get to watch the chat, but hello, welcome for those of you in the chat. Uh, let's see here. What did I miss in the chat? Uh, what's up, Scott? What's up, Jeff? Um, Fishaholic. What's up, guys? So, basically, I'm gonna go over a couple things in today's live cast. It's about 82 at my house right now, so nice and warm. I could have fish tubs outside, probably. Last night didn't get too hot, but I got, I don't know if you can see it, burned with my skin condition and stuff. No good. But I just wanted to show you something real quick before we hop inside. So, you see these random tires and water pans and over here we have another container on the ground and uh, so th my plan there we'll go inside now by the way these are my other projects and then my wife's over in a garden that connects to the other side of our property but so those are my sneaky ways my sneaky ways of essentially keeping, let's see, things aren't in focus. Uh, my essentially sneaky ways of keeping live, yes, we are live, and uh, of keeping uh, Daphnia and mosquito larvae for my fish, which I'm breeding, which I'm going to show you in the disaster room. It's totally a disaster room right now. Also, if you didn't see it last time, I picked up five years of Tropical Fish Magazine. I have two more crates and every uh, Amazonas for free. So I scored out big time on that one. Somebody was just like, I don't want to have them anymore. Yada, yada. I also wanted to show you guys another thing before the show starts. I might do videos on all this stuff more in depth later. Um, but uh, here are some books from the 1950s. And uh, they're on bonsai and also on um water bonsai as they call it um they didn't know the or they don't use anyways in the book the japanese words but they have really good illustrations and info and so th these have kind of a cool story and for those who are watching i'm just kind of talking about something that interests me uh before i get to talking about the stuff in the title just as we're waiting for people to filter in so hello as always feel free to ask questions make yourselves at home so basically these tools i had a buddy who passed away and he was 62 years old when he passed away 10 years ago so his mother, Cecilia, what up? Come on in, Mr. D, hello. So his, oh yeah, happy Father's Day, by the way. Totally, totally on point, Scott. We need to do that barbecue, Scott. It sounds like that would be great. Uh, I want to see your place still. Um, as you might see on my face right now, I have these like crazy blisters and welts and like, Whatever. We're not looking at me. I'm not as pretty as a fish. Uh, but Scott, we, we'll do that. We'll do that. We'll get the fish crew together from the Puget Sound and do that. So I just wanted to show you guys this stuff before we get into the meat and potatoes of things. But this is a sideshow. And essentially, these tools are mostly made, a couple of them, these three here, are older. These are from before the turn of the century. And these are... Uh, tweezers and things made for creating bonsai creations and so in these books there's clippings which is kind of cool from my my buddy his name was dean and he was a forestry uh, a phd in forest ecology and he taught at university of washington dean berg was his name he died uh I'll divulge it. Uh, he died uh, dancing his heart out. I think he may have been under the influence of mushrooms, but he died dancing his heart out quite literally at a uh, string cheese incident and, I don't know, some other bands, like a, a, a total hippie parade. So he went out doing what he loved, which was hanging out with people, uh, you know, camping out in the woods uh, at Summer Meltdown. So... Um, anyways, he, he introduced me into a lot of stuff like the Grateful Dead and Tool and 
took me to concerts when I was a little kid, uh, or not little kid, but, you know, 14 or whatever, when my parents wouldn't go, they'd allow him to take me. So, uh, I will show you the rainbow soon. Uh, so in any case, his mother and him, he was born in Japan, and his mother, yeah, see, here's this water bonsai, uh, which it doesn't give a name to, but there's like islands and fish tanks and stuff like that, and all sorts of interesting, I mean, actually, it's pretty impressive, like, I haven't seen some of the stuff that's this level bonsai, because this book is written by several people who, after World War II, uh, were living in Japan, and um, apparently these people went and tried to talk to some bonsai masters. And so they wrote those books, and there's some cool info in there uh, that hopefully I can show off. Just about, like, how to trim plants, like, aquarium plants, and submerge versus immerse. Like, they know all about that in Ancient Bonsai. Uh, and then there's a little bit of a newer book. But, so like I was saying, he passed away. That was sad. Um, but he left me these tools, which were his mother's and his great-grandmother's. And his great-grandmother was interested in bonsai at the turn of the century, and his mother was, in 1946, stationed, 46 to 49, stationed with her husband uh, in Taiwan and in Japan, and she picked up these tools. And one cool thing about these tools, uh, so you got the 100-year-old tools here, all of them still are smooth as the day that they were made and just tight craftsmanship. It's kind of interesting. But you can see they're hammered and just made out of metal. Um, and there's markings and stuff, which I've looked up. And so far, it appears that a lot of it is Chinese uh, made in, uh, or Chinese markings. Like, so it was made in Japan and thought to be sent off to China to be sold even though they were at war but that was because in Hong Kong the the Dutch Portuguese British all these people had and Germans all had ports in Macau and Hong Kong and Taiwan the US and stuff like that so the World War two post economy they tried to refuel it and one of the things is there's a stamp on all these on these all these other ones and they are made they're certified war steel. So it meant that the steel and the metal used in these was broken down from decommissioned tanks and guns and then hand hammered by different families who had been pre-war all the way back several hundred years bonsai masters and school owners. So I thought that was just a little cool something to share with you uh, that I hadn't ever really shared with you guys. But I was into bonsai for a little bit, and so yeah. So also, I know a lot of people are going to be like, what's going on? I clicked on this for Rainbow Fish and for uh, the, the, uh, the possibility of 100 bucks. So let's get to some of the Rainbow Fish. So um, yeah, and bonsai is directly Steve Salty Shrimp. Welcome. United Tanks of America, welcome, uh, Walter. And so right here we have our Aru-2s. These are the uh, Pseudomagill, Magol or McGill, however you want to say it, Aru-2, um, Gertrude is their species name, and I'm trying to zoom in a little bit, but this tank gives them such poor color. Like when I water change, when I do water changes, they turn bright yellow and orangish red and all this stuff. And there you can kind of see with the contrast of that mop there, you could kind of see some of the color. But basically, I have two pairs of them. The females are fairly drab. They almost look like guppies or something. But they all have these uh, stunning blue eyes. And then uh, they have the potential. If you look up A R U. And then two, which is uh, II, like World War II. They have some really beautiful markings. And these ones happen to have been collected two generations ago in 2016 uh, by Gary Lang and brought back from uh, 
Papua and the island of Aru, Aru, uh, Aru, and they are collected from the second known collection site on a river, but they occur all over Australia and Papua New Guinea, and I have eggs to that effect down below of right here. So I've got a thermometer hooked up, and then they're floating, and I've got eggs of two different species here. So these are eggs of the um, Thudamagil lumi uh, luminatus, which are like the reddish yellowy orange Pseudomagils you might have seen in pet stores. But all these are from Gary Lang, and so when collected from the wild, they do not have the same, uh, what's the word, like, they have better luster and colors, and their activity's just different, and their fins are bigger. Uh, Christine, welcome. Uh, guten Tag. Guten Nacht? Uh, I don't know. Guten Morgen? Guten Morgen, probably more likely, almost. So here you can see, though, unfortunately, we got two cloudy eggs, so those ones have probably turned on us. But we have 24, so these are Pseudomagill Gertrudei up above, and then these are um, Reticulatus and uh, Luminatus. So that's the orange ones that look kind of like fork tails, or fur uh that you'll see at pet stores oftentimes. I've got one upstairs I can show you guys later. Um, but you'll see those, uh, yeah, Gutnacht, uh, yeah, yeah. Um, and then on this string here, these are the reticulatus. So those you'll never really see in the hobby. Gary Lang and a few other people have them. They're a metallic color. And let's see if we can uh, try to see the actual eggs a little bit better. Because some of them are eyeballed up. Like this one, you can see the fish curled in. Um... And you can see that they're they're almost ready, a couple of them are. This one has eyes, and you can see the spine. And you can actually, if you watch them, sometimes they'll move in their egg. Um, and there was one egg that was oblong. So this one I need to separate. It has turned cloudy today. It might be because, let's see, the temperature should be between 82 and 84, and we're at... Let's see here. Let me zoom back out. Sorry, guys. We're at 84.4. So it's getting a little warm in there. Uh, but that's okay. 84 is okay. Uh, they like these warmer waters for hatching. And then to live in, like, 76 is better. Up here we have another rainbow fish. These are the praycocks or ne dwarf neon rainbows. We have spawning mops for all five rainbow species, um, except for these praycocks. All of mine are Sudamagills, which are small blue-eyed ones. Now, the other interesting thing about this tank, I have two more rainbows that are Sudamagill fry that I hatched via Steve from Aquarium. Uh, these are like Pacific blue eyes, I think is what he called them, because he didn't know for sure what they were. But I'm going to try to grow them up. And to be awesome, I only have two. And I've kept them alive thus far, these two. So, um, it, but it, they're, they're really pretty. They have like an orangish tail and forked twit tail. I think they're a selection. Um, yeah, Scotty, uh, I might have to take you up on that, man. And then the other thing I did is the uh, catfish are still in here. Uh, the, the big old green dragons are under this rock hidden for a couple days so they might be laying eggs we'll see this might be the egg tank and then we've got the uh i moved all my julii corridoras here oh never mind there's the female uh the female all right whatever i don't know what they're doing then uh and then all the tatia rainbows or tatia not rainbows boy i've got too many fish names stuck in my head all the tatia mosaica which is not what they really are but there's something close are also in this tank so believe it or not this tank is 20 long has two uh, pair of full-grown like five to six inch uh, 
Pleco, Green Dragon, and Sistress, Brishy Nose, or Bristle Nose. It has six or seven, about half and half female and male, of these Julii Corridoras. And then it has three of the Tatia, the little baby orca looking uh, catfish. So everyone's kind of nocturnal in this. And then it also has these little blue eyed uh, pseudomagills. I'm. Yeah, I love rainbows. I don't do big rainbow species simply because I'm not allowed to have big tanks at my apartment slash my at my life because of my wife uh, if we had a house maybe but right now like we might be moving in December and I have already got 10 tanks that are like mostly 20 longs or 20 talls and then a 40 bow and a 30 or a 29 I should say so um between all that, she's kind of like, eh, no more tanks right now. And I see her point, definitely, because I just keep going, uh, if you guys know how that is. Then up here, I'm trying to get something out of... These are Tin Winnie Danios that I've had for a while. Finally ID'd the purple Danio that we were trying to ID on the channel for a while now. And then we also have... Uh, uh, Caiaphas Danios, and then also sometimes when these rainbow fish, the RU2s, think that I'm not looking, they'll put on a cool display. So I'll just kind of like film at them for a little bit and we'll see if they, they do anything. But that mops in there because even though they're young, they are ready to spawn. So, and the other thing is the really tiny fry uh, from the Danio tank is crossing back and forth. Uh, it, this is CPDs and Danios, by the way. I know that's confusing to some people, but I have five CPDs in there and five Danios and a couple mops. And I'm basically just whatever eggs I get, great. So um, it's kind of just a hatching chamber right now um, until I put stuff outside, but it's still been getting cold at night. So. Uh, while I just let you guys watch these, wait until they cross in front of the mop, and then you'll really see the beauty of these fish. Um, but essentially, the males are the, the showstoppers, and they have the ability, if you Google it, uh, they've got all sorts of fins on their back and below that most fish don't. And... Um, they can put on these really crazy elaborate shows and they'll swirl around each other showing off their fins. And I've been feeding everyone as much live food as possible outside. I was showing you those tires and stuff because I'm just getting mosquitoes out of there. Larva, I should say. And that's worked really well. These guys love mosquito larva, young mosquito larva. Uh, baby Brian or Daphnia would be great too, but I just don't happen to have those cultures right now. They seem to like uh, vinegar eels a little bit and microworms pretty much not at all. Currently hid, what's up, man? Uh, so, yeah, so you're looking at the pseudomagills. Now, these are full grown or almost full grown. They'll bulk out a little bit. And I'll tell you some info on these pseudomagills, but basically I got to meet Gary Lang, the guys from Aquarium Co-op, and uh, Corvus uh, Osin, and uh, Randy from the Aquarius podcast, all of us, plus the club members of the C Greater Area Seattle uh, Aquatic Society, uh, also went to dinner with Gary, so I got to see him for two nights and listen to two different lectures, plus chat with him and, and kind of get to know him a little bit to the point where now I think he'll uh, definitely set me up sending me uh, fish if need be. And I also talked to him slightly about doing uh, scientific illustration for him in the future because he has about 15 species that still need naming. So, um, <clears throat> side note, sorry, I'm, I have to do that when I step up onto the chair that I've got here. So, side note, I've got cardboard and things on the side here because these guys will f fly full speed 
into the side of their enclosure if you don't put something to stop it, like either plants or oh, paint it black or whatever. If it's clear glass, they will smash themselves to the point where they can kill themselves. Uh, so, yeah. Now, they are good for nano tanks. These ones, Pseudomagills in general, are pretty good for nano tanks. They do like more room. They do like being in big groups, but that being said, they'll do just fine. They just may not display as much color. These ones are not displaying the greatest color right now because they, one, they like plants a ton, and two, uh, they're not in a very big space. And so this is what you get when you're trying to breed them. You get the females with just a little bit of yellow, and uh, then the males, you'll see when he crosses in front of the mop, you can see their colors where you've got this red line right through the center, and then you've also got some burgundy, and then on their fins that are not extended right now currently, uh, they've got yellow and white and, and like leopard print and all sorts of stuff. Hello, <clears throat> welcome, multiple aquariums. Uh, so just wanted to show you guys that I will be putting them in a nice little enclosure that, uh, is more fitting, that brings out their color. Uh, but right now the goal is to get them to breed instead of to get them to be colorful, uh, because they only breed for about a year. Uh, did Gary have any Radon and Radon and Centris or Natus, uh, localities available at the club. I don't know that fish even. I'm sorry, Incog Polywog. Um, I just don't scientifically off the top of my head remember what fish that is. Um, but if you see what he has basically for public consumption is what's on Aquabid. And he said he'll be putting a bunch of stuff Oh, the ornate rainbow fish. Yeah, he did have those. Um, he brought 32 species with him. And uh, his talk will be posted online on the GSAS, uh, GSAS uh, website <clears throat> at some point this summer. Uh, there were two lectures. I think one is a secret lecture that you had to be there for where he talks about collecting um, in Papua and kind of the crazy gun-toting militias and locals. Now see how the, how clear these are, these are right now, translucent? They'll color up more with yellows or reds, and uh, the yellow fins up front will color up more, and then their, their blue eyes get even bluer, and then they'll have these white, uh, like solid white, not translucent white, uh, upper fins and lower fins that have polka dots or leopard spots or stripes depending on the fish. This is the best male I keep trying to catch on film. When he gets in front of the mop, you can see the colors and that's like half as good as the colors should be just because they're cooped up. And it may look mean because they're only cooped up in a five gallon divided section of a 20, but uh, this was Gary's suggestion. He said to put four to six in there and that that would keep them, one, from just roaming and laying eggs everywhere, <clears throat> and two, it would keep them from getting enough of a running start to hop out of the tank. He said to leave at least two inches of water line between the tank and then probably to cover it at night just in case. Uh, these things are known to jump a uh, hundred times their body length, <laughs> which sounds crazy. I don't know who measures that, but I heard that. Uh, I will show my shrimps also because I have news on them. So let me tell you too, and by the way, here goes a shrimp just cruising by one of my reds. It's just getting a lot of glare up there. Um, and then the Danios that I was talking about and also the CPDs. Here's the yellow CPD that most people probably don't see very often. It has yellow fins. Whereas most of them are the fire red kind, which I'll show you upstairs later, or the orange. These are yellow here, though. So that means that those probably came out of Thailand, and it, that's not as popular of a collection point as the Burmese one. So, 
people, I know they're, they're wondering about the prizes and things. Also, I wanted to tell everybody who's thinking of raising pseudomagills, uh, that is blue eyes of any sort, you have to do a water change every, really every day for sure, but you want to do it every, every mm, 12 hours is ideal, 8 to 12 hours. And also make sure that the stupid snails stay out of your, your uh, tank. They keep trying to get in even though this thing's floating and cordoned off. They're crawling out of the water to get over the lip to get to these, which is kind of impressive considering there's no air circulation. But Gary wanted me to tell everyone on the channel this important fact that they've just figured out about rainbow fish and a lot of fish this probably applies to in general but uh essentially a lot of people are having low hatch rates on you name the fish there's a chance that you know this or that species whether it was um you know crebensis or or um tetras or whatever they may have a low hatch rate even though they're laying eggs and the reason why uh wim what's his name wim uh sorry guys i'm burnt out today uh from the from yesterday was a hard day on me uh wim hoff is that his name he's like a ultra marathoner and uh crazy crazy dutchman uh but he's also into exploring the world and going to collect pseudomagills. But he and some other folks figured out that the dechlorinators like Prime and, uh, you know, Hikari dechlorinator are, they, the way they clean up chlorine is they bond to the chloramines or the chlorine uh, particles in the water and they surround it, which renders it safe. Uh, so, what they can do though, unfortunately, is those same chemicals will surround the membranes on these rubbery eggs and they will actually make it hard, like a hard rather than rubbery eggshell. And that then causes the eggs not to hatch because they can't break through. And oftentimes you can try to help them hatch and do things like that, but it just doesn't work um, and they get stuck in there and they literally get smothered to death by their their own eggshell so that's unfortunate but um, it's good that we figured out that it is the, the prime in the water that's doing that so or dechlorinator whatever you want to call it um, but basically you're supposed to use and not distilled it needs to have some normal uh, capillary action and pH action of normal water you don't want it to be ultra clean or ionized or anything funky but essentially uh, you just used water from a separate tank that you haven't used uh, dechlorinator on for at least four or five days and uh, I've been drawn out of this tank and that will set you up with eggs hopefully that the babies are able to escape from so as i said these are pseudomagill reticulatus and just like reticulated python kind of and then uh, pseudomagill luminatus which are the reddish orange or red neon pseudomagills and then these are pacific blue eyes um which can be it, uh, raised in brackish water as well that I have two babies of these were not from uh, these were not from Gary Lang okay so while we're down here there was a request to look at shrimp so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you guys some shrimp uh, and a whole lot of snails um, here's a whole bunch of different types of shrimp in a shrimp baby uh, cage <laughs> I'll just say cage. That's what it is. Uh, and they're all eating right now. Um, so we've got here, we've got yellow uh, neocaridinas. And we've got red neocaridinas. And we've got shadow pandas and panda shrimp. And then some black king kongs and some red king kongs. Uh, there are no 
female adults in here of any sort. There's just some yellow youngins here because they'd get eaten so quickly that I let the female hatch in here. By the way, here is a blue bolt that's all buried up, which is good to see. Um, I have lost a number of shrimp lately, adults, which is disconcerting, and I don't know why. They're, sh they're shedding fine, um, and I, I just don't, I don't know what's up. It, maybe it's the warm temperature, like, has thrown off the heaters compared to how cold it usually is in Seattle. Um, but basically... Um, yeah, I do catch the snails from time to time, but actually this tank, this is every snail in the tank pretty much all piled together because I've put food in it right before I was going to film this for you guys. Um, and it, I have like no planaria or hydra when I have these snails, whereas this tank I pretty much eradicated the snails from and I have had such bad planaria outbreaks that it's not even, well, it's not funny. And... Here you can see a baby blue shrimp. There's some algae down there, but you can see all the seed shrimp and the um, little, I don't know, just things. So actually this is probably the tank that the baby rainbow fish will go in um, once they hatch. They are so small when they hatch. They're like eyelash small. Um, like they're as, as skinny as an eyelash on their tail. And uh, in this tank here, we've got the Blue Dreams. That's the only Neocaridina in here. And we've got two more pregnant females. We've got a batch that were born maybe four weeks ago, uh, hanging out, running around. They're just all over the place. And they all look pretty good. Some of them have kind of this black color. Like, here's some natural sunlight coming in. Let's see here if we can get it to focus without the, the tank glare. So, here, yeah, there's the natural blue of the shrimp. They don't like being in the sun, because it means that, like, a predator could be seeing them. Uh, but there's that nice blue. These are Lucas Brett's LRB Aquatics uh, Perfect Blue Dream Shrimp. And then this here is one of my... Uh, Brian, hello. Betsy, hello. Do Neocaridinas crossbreed? They do. But they don't crossbreed with caradinas. So, like, we've got uh, crystal shrimp, and we've got uh, right here, these are Babalti Indian shrimp. And then you can see the babies and the adult blue shrimp. Um, good. Uh, Francisco, welcome, welcome. Uh, also, this is the tank that I'm uh, breeding my golden snails in with the peach or pink red flesh whatever you want to call it but they're either gold or kind of like a like a shimmery color and so i've been working on that line for a while whereas i have a leopard strain over here in this tank um and it's it's half black half normal and i'm trying to get all of their flesh to be black within like a gold and black outside and so that's what's going on over here. Um, also, you can see how many yellow Neocaridinas I have. There's a couple baby jades. So these ones can all mix in theory, but you have like three to five months until shrimp mature. So within a month from now, these shrimp are only about a month old at the oldest. And so within a month from now, they'll all be out, all the young, all these ones that you see of medium size will all be out of here and placed back in their respective tanks. So that's uh, not the most professional way to do it if you're trying to keep a line really clean, but it works really well as a hobbyist for me because I don't need 15 little tanks. I can just make sure there's no males, uh, male adults. And if a female crosses, I can always quarantine her if, if, uh, if the babies are something else. Now here is another one of the Babalti shrimp. They look kind of orange. Um, not focusing. But yeah, so let's... Oh, you can see the baby with, with, uh, with its mom. That one gave birth a while back, that female. She's nice and true blue. 
she almost looks male when but you can tell on these ones because they've got a clear uh, side skirt kind of where their back uh, legs are which I can't remember the word is it parapods or something or pletopods or there's a name for the back legs and I'm totally spacing on it um, pleopods <laughs> anyways uh, you can see with the female if they're female in this strain because they you can see those legs through that sidewall whereas like over here crystal shrimp which are caradina not neocaradina you can't see through their sidewall they have just solid nothing nothing to look through now in this same tank we also have uh, golden bee shrimp and all three of them were buried up also so I'm kind of curious where they're off at oh here they are under this leaf and they should be giving birth any day they've been pregnant for over a month and they've all been hanging out together um, so let's see here focus Let's see if we can get you guys a shot of something other than blue dreams in this tank. Now there's the lightest blue dreams in Lucas's strain, and some people like those. They go for those. Um, is this the plant winners giveaway video? This is another reminder. I'm gonna I'm gonna get to those details in just a second. Um, I'm just kind of covering. People wanted to see the rainbow stuff and all that. Um, and so I'm just kind of covering all the bases, and then people wanted to see how the shrimp were doing. Um, thanks, man. Thanks, Gareth. Uh, I appreciate that, buddy. So also, which was funny, was today um, the... Uh, come on, show your eggs. I just want to show you guys the side walls. So you can see those eggs kind of under her belly. Um, maybe you can. Uh, and... They have these, like, armor, sets of armor on their side bellies. Here we go. We'll see it here. Um, and you can see the eggs up under there. See them? The dark area. And normally, in Neocaridina, that armor gets see-through a lot of times. But for these, for these ones, they've been buried up for a long time. So, uh, she won't drop her eggs. She's fine. <laughs> she's about to, she should hatch her eggs any second now. Anyway, she's been pregnant for, like, all, all three of them have been pregnant, but this big female with the red spot on her forehead, she's been pregnant for, like, I don't know, six weeks maybe? The other one's for four. Uh, and then one of these is also pregnant, one of the, uh, crystal shrimp. But I'm really excited that the blue, uh, the blue bolts are pregnant. Also, two of them. Uh, Christine, Flip Aquatics has shrimp. Uh, yeah, I got these shrimp. Uh, all these caradinas are from Flip Aquatics, and then the greens that you see in here, all these with the white eyes that are green. Uh, those are Babalti shrimp, and they are from AquaticArts.com, and all that info is in a link in the description. Also, I got rid of all my cribs. I sold them, or gave them away, or traded them, and now we are down to one pair of cribs. Um, so, yeah, we've got this one female left. If eh, I'm not going to bug her to come out more than just I'll lift this for a second. If she wants to show off, she can. Nope. So, um, but yeah, we've got all those uh, cribs have found a home except for this pair here. Um, yeah, so we're going upstairs. What did I... Th oh, is Bentley here? Oh, Bentley, what's up, dude? Uh, hold on one sec. I'm going to wash my hands after touching shrimp water. I'm also allergic to shrimp, so um, it's kind of funny. I'm allergic to nuts and shellfish, and you use almond leaves and catapa leaves. <laughs> or, you know, catapa leaves, which are all Indian almond leaves. And then I touch the shrimp, and that's my hobby. As you can see, I've got... Um, 
Mm -hmm. How am I going to show this? Does that work? I've got quite the uh, like rash going on from just the last couple days of sun and bad health issues. So let's talk about now that we've covered and if you're just joining us, welcome. I know I look crazy because I just splashed my face with water too. But let's cover the giveaway again, which will be drawn next Thursday. And let's cover um, what, what's going on in this tank. So we've got lots of plants. Aquatic Arts has agreed to, they've already been sending me things for a reduced price. Um, or kicking in a couple free things when I order stuff and then giving you guys the discount price too By the way, here's those red CPDs or orange CPDs. Whereas the ones you saw earlier were yellow if you recall So it's just a variation from regionally um, And uh, I know Bentley I was like dude come get a pick come get a pick mm -hmm with the two of you, but I think you were talking to someone else or something. Cause Gary was saying the same thing. He's like, he's putting my kids through college. And I was kind of laughing at that. Bentley in the chat, by the way, whose fish room I toured, please go check out his channel. He is much more schooled in fish like rainbow fish than I am. And he got a hold of, what'd you get, eight or nine species or something like that he bought at the auction or got a hold of or whatnot. So that was pretty cool. Nine. Yeah, nine. So the other thing I did while I was making mops for everyone else is I made mops for my big tank just to see what might happen. Now, I know that my big tank, it's kind of silly to make mops for such a crazy busy tank. But, I mean, why not? Like, they're definitely eating all their babies right off the bat. So I figured, you know, we'll, we'll, ha we'll throw them to the wolves and see what happens. And I'll pull the mop, like, once a week. And if there's any eggs in it, I'll put it up in the egg tank. So um, just showing you plants that I'm growing for you guys. Um... Can I run a rainbow tank with no substrate, just plants? Well, your plants are going to need some sort of substrate unless they're uh, plants with rhizomes. Uh, I mean, you could use Anubias and Java ferns or like, um, you know, I guess you could float something up top, like all this floating raft of stuff or uh, octopus or in pots. Then, yeah, you definitely could. Um, do rainbows that way they do like plants though that's definitely a, a true statement um, and they do like a little more room to move than some other fish so I only have one rainbow in this tank and that is a fructatus right up here this is the other blue eye there used to be a pair but the male passed away um, but I've had this solo female now for six months so uh, that is all five of the Pseudomagills that I have. Uh, you've seen them all now. And uh, hopefully I'll be making more. I don't know. We'll see if those eggs hatch. One egg hatched the first or the second night. And it ended up uh, having a crooked back and died, stopped swimming very shortly after hatching. So that was sad. But what I'm showing you here, this is my pearl, as I like to call them, ram's horn red ram's horn uh and uh i'm working on that strain in this tank too also working on some lilies lilies have been taking a beating for some reason lately and also this guy from lucas brett's my endler um he they will not have babies in this tank these there are nine female endlers in here and none of them want to have babies in this tank or they're all eating the babies like instantly which seems unlikely like i'd probably see a baby since i feed these guys three times a day i'd probably see a baby here or there um plus there's all this rafts of stuff and there's places for them to hide 
There are a couple younglings I've thrown in from other tanks just to test if that was what's going on. But for some reason, they don't give birth in here. They'll get pregnant in here, I found out last week. But they won't give birth. It's just very odd. Um, also, all my yellow Neocaridinas in here passed away. So I'm glad that the babies gave birth. I'm not sure what happened. I think perhaps the temperature... The heater got screwy, and that may have happened. Did you ever get jellyfish hikers on your plant? Apparently, I have jellyfish bloom. No, I'm all... Whoa, I've never heard of that. I'm all freshwater anyways, but jellyfish... I mean, there are a couple freshwater jellyfish, but um, no, I've never had them. Like, I think, what is it, Palau has one? Mm. Sorry, guys, I'm getting a drink. It's really hot. Um, if you have freshwater jellyfish in a square tank that are doing okay, that is pretty amazing. Are you sure they're jellyfish and not, like, nematodes or I, I don't know what, like, some sort of critter? I'm going to grab my, our sponsor, um, which... Dr. Pepper Cherry today, I believe, with Jurassic Park cans. Um, you have water lettuce plants you can send me. Yeah, I've got a lot here. Let's go back downstairs. I hope the internet doesn't break up. Um, but, yeah, Bob, what's up? Uh, I tried to live stream earlier this week, and YouTube would just not do it. Also, the other thing is, like, well... Yeah, it could be a hydra. Look up hydras. They look like they have tentacles and they swim around and they're super teeny. But I've got um, uh, salvinia and then I've also got giant water lettuce. On other tanks, I've got some other water lettuce. I've got frog bit that I didn't want. Um, but there it is. And the rainbow hatching tray. Dun, 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 dun. And the little thermometer, has it gotten hotter? It's the hottest part of the day. Uh, 84.6, that's getting too hot. So I'm probably going to move them to a cooler tank. Just to keep the eggs around 82 rather than 84 on these. Pseudomagills do like it warmer, but that's pushing hot. Uh, also, this looks like a jellyfish. kind of reminds me of this plant. Um, let's... let's uh, Come on, Dr. Pepper. Oh, they can go to 86 on those, Bentley? On the RU2s. It is like an extremely hot region, so hopefully... Or on the reticulatus, I should say. So, I'll leave them be then. But, yeah, so those are chilling. Now, I wanted to go through, and I've showed you guys all of the tanks now. Oh, except for the project tank that is no more um and i've shown you all the tanks all the plants and uh here's those ru2s again maybe they'll do something pretty they're only really pretty when they get in front of that mop for contrast though unfortunately and i can't friggin wait to get them out of this little spawning tank so hopefully in the next month they'll lay a decent amount of eggs that I can incubate and then I can not worry so much about it. Um, careful doing a potted container in Vegas because you could kill your fish with the heat. If it stays cool enough, that'll be your issue in Vegas. Um, but yeah, so these are the RU2s and some little mismatch babies. Da, 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 da. They've got little Dumbo. There, you can see the color, finally. And the pink, and then they've got white when when they're expressing themselves. But they're probably not going to do that because they already just did it before the show, unfortunately. But sometimes they get into little pissing matches with each other. Um, uh, Frankie skates. Here, we'll talk about that um, outside of the live stream, Frankie. And maybe I can send you some. It depends where you live. Um, it's also so plentiful that you might be able to find it closer. Like shipping on, uh, sending stuff out 
Like, you can probably get yourself some for cheaper than that closer, but we'll talk. We'll see what's up, and we'll figure it out. So hit me up on a comment after the program or on this video or whatever, you know, or YouTube or um, Facebook. Uh, 118 last year. We'll do plants, some white clouds, plants for Christmas moss. Yeah, yeah, that sounds good. Come on, hatch. I've just been staring at these things. want to shake them, make them hatch. But they're getting, I mean, they're, they're definitely, they've been solid black since I got them. And only one or two are not. They've been very, come on, very hard to focus on, apparently. But, yeah. So, let's get... There, you can see the eyeballs on some of these. Um, focus. Why is the camera... I, there's like this humidity in this room, and I think maybe it's screwing with the <coughs> focus. Alright, this is just getting ridiculous. I'm giving up at the moment. Oh! So I just had to say I'm giving up, and then they come into focus for a second. Uh, so, let's talk about the giveaway. It's happening next Thursday, is when I'll be drawing names. And what you have to do, if you haven't heard the word, and the bird is the word, here's some baby blue eyes. Very adorable. Look at them. Those have got to be a couple months old now. Um, but, so... For the drawing, all you have to do is write a comment on one of the videos where I announced the drawing. All except this video, too. Um, and no way, blue eyes. Yep. And then, uh, come on, so many little, and I know it looks like I have a crazy snail infestation, which I do. But they're very tiny snails. These are babies. Like the adult shrimp. That's not even a large adult shrimp. Like here's a larger adult shrimp back there. Um, so. Just trying to get you some. Interesting. Shots. But everybody's hiding. It's so hot. And they don't like the sun on hot days. Baby blue. Uh, the baby. Blue dreams are usually all hanging out on this wall eating. And, uh, yeah, no, I've already, uh, uh-oh, did you find snails in one of your tanks, Bentley? I already have had to fight off snails, and there's a lip on the container out of the water that goes over the edge, and I'm still fighting off snails. Um, every few hours they'll make an attempt, they'll come out of the water. Actually had some on that tank that came out of the water this way, trying to eat them. And they can't smell it, like... The... Oh, no! Eleni Wapoga, man, those are... Alright, I won't make it any worse, but I'm sorry, Bentley, that sucks. That is, uh... It is hard to get them out of the water. If you want to find out if you have snails, put some baby fish eggs in, in your tank. Just eggs you care about. They won't come attack normal eggs. You have to care about them. Uh, so, do, 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 I'm reading comments, sorry. <laughs> okay. Alright, so plants. Plants. Giveaway. $100 giveaway. The reason why a lot of people are chilling and watching this video in the first place. So... You have to comment that you want to be in the contest on the first contest video or the second contest video or this one. Any of the videos with the title of the three with the title giving away a hundred dollars or a hundred dollars worth of plants or whatever uh, will work. And I'll check those and I'll what I'll be doing is I'll be taking all the names, printing them out, putting them in a spreadsheet in like 8 point font and probably just cutting up so if I see that you said I want in I'll cut up your name add it to my list in word 
And then, uh, the other thing you have to do, though, is you'll already have to be in my other Word or Excel list where you have to go back to one of my videos that's more than, let's say, two months old. I mean, I'm not going to be a stickler on that. But I'm keeping track of who's commenting on videos that don't have very many views but maybe interest you. Because as you've probably known if you've watched my channel, and as I was very frustrated to deal with today, um, YouTube was like, Hey, don't forget Super Chats. Do you want Super Chats? Don't forget to turn Super Chats on. And I was like, have I not had Super Chats on, but I had that ability this whole time? Because uh, I could use them. I'm super broke right now. And no. So I clicked the button that's Don't Forget Super Chats, like Enable Super Chats, and it says, We're still debating. So they've been thinking about whether or not to monetize my channel now for almost six months. And... I've been ready to be monetized all that time, and they're taking money. If you see an ad, please tell me, because, like, I, there better not be ads <laughs> that they're just getting money off of when I have it set to no ads. But I do like the idea of monetizing for Super Chat or whatnot, because not everyone wants to do Patreon, I get it. Um, but every dollar really helps because I need to get things like more lights to help grow plants. I need to get a microphone so that I can do better interviews. In the long run, I need to get a better uh, camera, definitely, so that we can uh, get some better shots of things like at aquariums or stores. Um, but yeah, so that's in the long run. I'm not going to stress on that stuff. But suffice to say... The Patreon supporters, Bob, Betsy, uh, all you folks, it is, uh, I want in on the $100 giveaway, and if I win, I would like to donate it back to you. <laughs> well, thank you. Um, <clears throat> so, comment on this video after this video. Like, when this video posts after li it's live, that's where you'll have to comment. Um... And then go watch the older videos, as Betsy's saying. And so, watch the old videos. Watch this. By the way, I just caught these two shrimp uh, mating for a second, like on top of each other, doing a little funky. Uh, but then they spooked them off by turning the camera next to the glass. So, I've sure strung you guys along getting the words out of my mouth on uh, the plant giveaway details. But I do have a lot of plants now. We've got all sorts of species. As far as species that I can remember the name of, I've got around 60 right now with another six or seven coming soon from aquaticarts.com. And then uh, also, hopefully, Bentley and I will be exchanging some plants in the near future as well. He needs to come by and check out whatever I might have that that he might want to have and then we can both have and we'll both have halves of each other's halves uh so yeah just comment on old videos and say like hey i learned comment what you learned or something interesting in the video and uh the awards go like this so for the first place winner, <clears throat> if you live in my area, you can have the choice of $100 worth of fish or plants or a mix, okay? If you're not in my area, it can be plants. So it'll be plants, and they will be trimmed and sent to you. And uh, depending on what's available, you know, we can discuss what plants you want. Let's go back upstairs, look at the plants one last time in this video. Because I kind of covered the rainbow fish hatching, the bonsai stuff, the tips and tricks about hatching the rainbow fish, and showed you guys them. <clears throat> also, my Endler babies are having more babies finally. In this tank, I've had to kind of sacrifice my pretty tank, as I like to call it and put a bunch of rat's nests of nodja grass <clears throat> um, because uh, the babies want to hide in there. So I shall let them. This mother's the next one to give birth. 
and this is another father who has a fork tail, which is a trait that I've yet to establish in this line. So he's working on it, uh, hopefully. But yeah, we've got lots of plants. Um, Bob, you can watch Alex's video on his tour of Bentley's tanks. Yeah, totally. Bentley also has his own channel with lots of videos now. I am sad to say, if you guys knew about the Pleco who ate the snail, he died. He choked or, I don't know, something on the snail. I'll post a video about it when I can edit it. But <clears throat> he passed away, which is a real bummer. So I'm sad about that. My, my favorite Pleco passed away. So. And by he, I mean she. Um, so, you can see I have a lot of different plants. This tank in particular, I have three kinds of hydrocodal right here. I've got, um, you know, lots of pogo stemmen right here. Ludwigia and Rotala. I have six kinds of Rotala right back there and here. And, uh, you know, mermaid plants. I have weird stuff from Afghanistan. I'll have to look up the Latin name again. Um, I have... Ocelot ferns, I have crypts galore, I have a few lilies and cuttings of lilies, we have uh, brownie eye, let's see, um, I have a lot of natural hybrids, so I really like some of these that look, if you look at them from up top, let's see if we can catch a look, they look like a staircase, some of these plants, I like how they stagger like that, and uh, yeah, like these ones. I really like those. And then we've got, you know, your standard stuff like purple cabamba. Um, we've got your um, different types of java fern. I've got three or four types of that. Ludwigia. This has all been cut because I was recently at the um, rainbow show auction, the rainbow fish auction. Uh, but then I also have oddballs, mini butterfly, um, pogo stem and erectus, pogo stem and health fairy, um, pinnatifada, uh, a bulbitis, lots of stuff I can give you cuttings from, crip undulata, crip parva, crip, um, let's see, pink flamingo, lots of stuff. So, lots of different plants, more rotalas, this is all low tech over here. Uh, Pogo stem and octopus, um, lots of just interesting little plants, so we can put together something um, for y'all for the the plant thing. Hornweed, if you want a hundred or hornwort, if you want a hundred dollars of hornwort, use a fool. No, uh, you can do that. We have uh, some new uh, spiralis uh, crypts also. Let's see what else is in here of interest. Really, my favorite right now is these pink flamingo starts that I'm trying to get going. They're having a hard time. Like, one or two are taking off. But they kind of look like the red tiger uh, with, you see the striations or markings on them, like lines. Uh, but they're, you can't see it in this video, but they're like a pink color, closer to what that leaf looks like on the video. Um... And then all my floating plants. So, lots of stuff. Now, number two, <clears throat> I will also give away... This substrate is fluorite, sand, and gravel. Old school, with root tabs. Um, and then liquid ferts. Also, there's Alterna Renickii. Um, this is another favorite, the... Uh, the Ludwigia ex lacustris or the Oculata Ludwigia, the mini versions of everything, uh, Limnophilia aromatica, and the mini version of that, the mini version of uh, Octopus, Pogosem and Octopus. Also, we've got a bronze, metallic bronze crypt back there that's huge, so I could split that one. But Lots of plants out there, lots of starts of java ferns, and also some boosts and things like that. And if you win the drawing, uh, you will... Thanks for saying the fish are cool, Steve. If you go to other videos, you'll see a lot of them, like any of the things on 
orange-eyed lemon tetras or um, I don't know. Uh, a lot of live streams will will end by just filming fish. You know, here's some boosts. I've got like blue ghosts, gold boosts, brownie boosts, uh, phantom. What is it called? Phantom crystal something. You know, people make up all these strains, but in the end, it's just a nice looking boost. Boost is one of those ones that's, that's it's kind of like pot if you ever like here pots legal but if you've ever been to a pot shop or something or had a pot dealer known someone they always have like a million names for pot and like sometimes it's just a minute difference and you know it's just i don't know whatever the name is just like a brand so <laughs> and then i've got different mosses same same deal pearl weed uh mermaid mermaid weed uh so yeah and then pantanol from uh, Bentley, can't see the color real well on this live stream, but I've also got uh, some Ludwigia X Lucustris and some Ludwigia, uh, what was it called? Ludwigia uh, Colorada and um, and Arculata that are hybrids, and it has like a really cool pinwheel motion to it where is it if i can find it you can't really see it because of the ripples in the water but straight down there the skinnier one it is so yeah steve steve's aquatics we'll talk i'll tell you about where to get these fish and things uh, uh flip aquatics has a lot of good fish uh aquatic arts is another spot oh here here's another one of those plants that has the kind of spirally swoopy leaves. I like that a lot. Uh, but some of these plants, I mean, are 50 bucks a piece in theory. Now, I'm gonna hook people up. Uh, yeah, ben check out Bentley's channel for like the color of Pantanal because I'm filming this on my camera or my uh, phone. And as I said before, one of the reasons why I can't wait for. Um, well, you know, selling off some plants, the channel to grow, um, all this kind of stuff is I get to give more back to you and then I get to make a better uh, quality video for the channel. Like, you can't see the blue at all or the in the wavy green blue phantom cross. You can't see it at all. Um, the go yellow gold boost, you can barely see that. It's got blue and gold and iridescence in it and this golden glow to it um but so i'm gonna wind things down here and let you know that the first place winner as i said gets a hundred dollars worth of plants and this isn't a hundred retail dollars like you'd get from like aquarium co-op or um plants direct or live aquaria.com like it's not going to be that kind of Portion. You're going to get a better portion or variety than that. You'll probably get like over a dozen easily species and starts. You know, maybe I'll give you five two inch starts of uh, uh, Pogo Stem and Octa Octopus. Uh, I know it's not actually called that. It's Pogo Stem and Octo. Octo. Whatever. <laughs> but I'll, I'll hook you guys up with what a fish club hundred dollars worth of plants is like and if you live in the area you can defer that to be good night betsy take care you can defer that to be a hundred dollars worth of fish from like any other rare fish i have other than my catfish stay away from my catfish um and my aru twos and then uh other than that there'll be two second place winners and they'll get essentially about $50 worth of plants, 25 to $50, I don't know. And that's, that's a hard one to call, but they'll get plants sent in the mail. So that is the gist of it for you guys. And as I said before, comment on this video, the past videos where I talk about um the this contest this award and this is a thank you for 2000 subscribers it's a thank you to my patreon supporters 
if you're on Patreon, you get double the chance to win. I'll be entering whether your name's in there twice or whatever. I'll double your chances of of winning this these three prizes. And it's out of 2,000 people, but I have to be honest, only about, mm, you have to be subscribed too. Only out of, out of the 2,000 plus people that watch my channel, less than 120 now have entered. So you guys have a pretty good shot, like a 0. .5, you know, one in 150 or so, one in 120 shot of of winning the big prize and you guys have like a 1.5% chance or whatever of winning a prize at this point. So enter, write your comment, watch an old video, watch a good chunk of it. This is to help get some minutes to the older videos because since I wasn't monetized, I'm still not, they don't come up in the search results as much. So find a video that's interesting, try to learn something, watch a bit of it, watch half of it. If you know, if it sucks, you can say, you can say it sucks or you've come a long ways, or whatever, um, or I'd like to see this revisited, or whatever it may be. You guys can be honest. That I appreciate that. Um, and it's all about learning, so if I mess something up in any of my videos, as always, please feel free to enlighten me, and we'll all learn together, um, because I don't know all of the things I talk about for sure, um, you know, intuitively. I've had to learn it somewhere, and uh, then share it with you guys, and when you're talking live or answering questions, you can get stuff mixed up. So just trying to keep it real about that. So I hope that everybody's doing well. I really hope that maybe this plant package can get someone's aquarium. Like, like for me, each plant was 10 to $20 or, you know, maybe, maybe three or four bucks for the ones you get at like, uh, Petco or whatever the the common ones, uh, the sword ferns and sword or sword plants, the stuff that's not ready to be in the water yet. It's immersed grown and it melts back and then it has to regrow and then like all the leaves fall off. All this stuff is immersed. Um, all of it is going to be ready to go for you in your tank. Uh, submerged, sorry, not immersed. <laughs> uh, it's submerged underwater. And it's all been treated. If you have a low-tech tank, let me know. We'll get all low-tech stuff for you. And I'll give you some instructions if you need them. If you got a high-tech tank, I'll hook you up with the, the fire, the beautiful plants. Um, and uh, I'll be still accumulating those things. But we'll, we'll probably have a live stream on Thursday of not this coming week, but the next one. Uh, so that way it was a two full week process for people to enter, subscribe. If you want to share a link, I'll go by the honor system. Just mention it, that you shared the video, or you got someone new to subscribe. I'll throw your name in there again. How's that? Just decided that right now. I'm impulsive. Tell your fathers, exactly, Cecilia, happy Father's Day. Happy Father's Day to everyone who has pets that they're a father to. Um, I know that in our community, a lot of us, uh, our pets are our family, our fish, our dogs, our cats. Um, and so uh, they mean a lot to people too. And uh, you take care of them. So treat yourself a little bit. Go buy that plant or that fish you wanted, perhaps. And... Uh, if you didn't do it for Mother's Day, do it now. Uh, all right, guys. Well, I will talk to you later. Get your chance to win, theoretically, up to 200 bucks worth of plants and stuff. Also, if you're outside the country, if you didn't see this in the old video, the last video, I will send you a gift card uh, in your country, not for $100. I'm sorry. I can't, I can't wing that one. I have spent that money on these plants in the past. <laughs> But I can't just come up with that amount of cash. Uh, so the other thing is, you know, like, comment, subscribe. Tell us what you learned on the old video. Go find it and comment on that video. Comment on this one or the first or second post talking about this giveaway. And then uh, I'll write down your name. I'll write down your name uh, when I see it there. So if I'll, I'll see it. Once there, if you're on Patreon, for a buck, you can just quit your Patreon afterwards. But for a buck, get on the Patreon stream for a month and then cancel it, and I'll put your name in twice. I mean, that's what I would do if I was watching uh, <laughs> for a chance like this. So, 
All right, guys. Well, I will talk to you later. Have a fabulous night, and uh, take care of yourselves, the people around you, the fish around you. Guten Nacht. Uh, good night to you in Germany. Uh, my parents are about to go visit uh, the, right by you, actually. And my wife and I would love to come visit that area again soon. We're going to be leaving on a road trip soonish too so i need to find someone to, to uh, feed my fish and caretake the house i need someone to guard the fish uh other than my uh really mean gudgeons i don't think they're gonna kind of i don't think they'll i don't think they'll work the way i want them to all right guys i already said the outro take care of yourselves enjoy the sun that's around most of the country and uh spread the love good night hugs and I'll talk to you guys later. Bye. Yes, I want to stop streaming. I'm tired.